What's up, everybody? This is Team B with your host, Brandon, along with me, Bill Mack, here. And this is Team B Presents, and we hope you enjoy the show. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, This is another episode of Team B, Raw Results. I'll get into it in just one second. Bear with me. I'm reading some fan mail here. Just, Just joking. Uh, we got uh, my co-host popping in here in a second, so you join in progress. We are live, baby. Gotcha. You didn't miss much, Bill. Bill, once again, did not catch Raw, but he didn't miss much. You know, um, I'm trying to remember what the opening promo was. I remember Stephanie coming to the ring, and uh, she got interrupted by Roman Reigns. They had it back and forth. You know, it was setting up the main event, which would be Roman Reigns. Versus Sheamus as Vincent Man as the referee. We'll get in that in a little while here, but uh, you know it's it's strange seeing um, Vince McMahon, you know, on Raw. Let me on Facebook. Okay. I am live, ladies and gentlemen. People on Facebook. And people on Facebook know I'm live because I post the stream here. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, yeah you know, I, uh, people are probably taking it for granted now, seeing Vince McMahon. Oh, wow, now I can see myself. Ooh, that's an ugly sight. Ugh. <laughs> you know, but I don't. It's like every time I see Vince on Raw every week, I'm like, it's almost like the first time in a way. I mean, he's been on there, you know, regularly here lately. But it's still, you know, there was, what, two or three years since Vince McMahon was on Raw? And it's been years since he was on Raw every episode like that, you know, back-to-back and so forth. So, you know, but that's the ratings drawer right there, you know what I'm saying? That's the one that's bringing in the ratings. Ratings go down to bring in Vince. And Vince has tried to stay away from the main camera, you know, he's trying to stay away from the main show. He's trying to let the other guys take over because Vince ain't going to be here much longer. Or he just wants to step away from that. You know, I get that. His character's played out, you know. But, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. And I, I totally understand that. But like I said last week, ladies and gentlemen, Monday Night Raw is a bleeding program. And they're not fixing it. They're just putting a Band-Aid on a bleeding product. They're just putting a Band-Aid on the motherfucker. They're putting a Band-Aid on it. You know, things like that. So, um, during Raw, we had the return of Chris Jericho. Eh, how many times is Chris Jericho going to return? It's cool. It's star power. I have nothing personally against it, but it don't do nothing for me. You know, I've seen Chris Jericho come and go throughout the years. And he's going to be in the Royal Rumble match. And he had a, a very a very good segment, back and forth segment with the New Day, you know, because they all got chemistry. And that was, you know, pretty funny to see um, them two go at it. And um, that's about, um, they're, they're keeping Kevin Owens looking strong. See, I kind of – well, I ain't going to say I misspoke last week, but I didn't put as much thought into it. But, now, you know, Kevin Owens getting upset in 20 seconds last week on Raw. What they're doing, they're making him into a vicious animal again. You know, that's why he beat the shit out of Neville. That's why he was beating his ass this week. He beat Neville clean on Raw, and I was so happy to see that. I remember when John Cena had the open challenge. It took him a while. It took him, what, 20 minutes to beat Neville, 20, 25 minutes? Uh, KO crushed Neville, man. I, that, that was awesome. Dean Ambrose. He's got a feud with Kevin Owens at the same time. Dean Ambrose was on commentary during the match. So Kevin Owens defeats Neville. Kevin Owens steps away from the ring. Then he turns around and starts attacking Neville again. Then Dean Ambrose jumps in, and him and Kevin Owens go at it. Dean Ambrose gets the upper hand, but that's because Kevin Owens just had a long-winded winded match, plus he's the heel. And he lays him on the announcer table, and Dean Ambrose drops a elbow on Kevin Owens and breaks through the table. So, very cool scene. I like Dean Ambrose. I'm more of a Kevin Kevin Owens fan, though, if I had to choose, but I do like Buzz. I just wish um, – I, like I like Dean Ambrose. I just wish he was more edgier. 
edgy or like, like Brian Pillman, kind of more batshit crazy, you know. But it's the PG era. For this era, you know, it's okay. So, uh, I believe Ryback was on Raw. I'm not sure. Let me see. You know. Well, Titus O'Neil had a match with Stardust. Stardust was defeated. Titus won with the Clash of the Titus finishing maneuver. Oh, here's what I like. Becky Lynch, Charlotte had a match. And uh, Ric Flair was at ringside. He was trying to distract Becky Lynch so Charlotte could get the cheap win like she did a few weeks ago. But this time it backfired, and Becky Lynch won the match with the roll-up. So that was very cool to see. You know, like I said, Ric Flair tried to interfere by, by grabbing her uh, Becky Lynch leg. Got the pin. Yeah, it was a non-title match. You know, sometimes I forget which one is the champion. Is it Paige or Charlotte? So it is Charlotte. You know, well, really, I get confused, like, who's the heel and who's the face? But it's pretty well established that Charlotte's the heel, as well she should be. She's got a nose like an upside-down penis. Ryback versus Big Show was a no contest, and it's completely wiped out my memory, you know. Now, the League of Nations, Rusev, and my man, Alberto Del Rio, defeated the Usos. Del Rio pinned Jimmy Uso after a trio, a trio woe double stomp. You know, I said that, that stomp he does in the turnbuckle was pretty cool. I like Del Rio. It's just he seems like all the charisma and energy was just sucked out of him, like, he, he was hit with a charisma vacuum because Alberto Al Patron and Lucha Underground was very cool. I like Alberto. I like his look. I just wish I had a body like that. You know what I'm saying? He's got that, that classical professional wrestler look to him. He's from Mexico. He's got a good heritage there. I'm not Mexican, but I respect the hair, the wrestling heritage of Mexico. So he's got all that stuff. And he just seems so stale in WWE, man. It sucks, you know? When he came back, at, I think it was not TLC, but a couple pay-per-views back, and he kicked John Cena. That was awesome. You know, he had some momentum, and then he just got back stale. The League of Urination, man. And I like most of the people in the in the League of Urination, Job Squad 2.0. I like most of them guys. Wade Barrett, you know, I've pretty much given up on Wade Barrett, but, man, there was just something there. It's just missing. I don't know what it is. And Del Rio is the same way. Now, I don't think it's their fault, man. It's, it's got something to do with either the times that we live in and the perceptions and fan reactions, or it's just the writing, the booking. I don't get it. You know, they did have something with Bad News Barrett. You remember that was catching on. Hey, we got some bad news. Everybody, everybody said it was catching on everything, and it stopped. He became King Barrett. Not King Bad News, but King Barrett. And uh but he's still the King of Bad News, but you want to call him King Barrett, obviously. You know, as a as far wrestling name. But uh that he had something going there. And he had some something going in the Nexus. We all know that. So yeah, League of Nations, it was Rusev and um the Rio team, tag team defeated the Usos. Heath Slater defeated Dolph Ziggler. Very funny. Yes, you re you've heard that correctly. Slater is now part of a team called the Social Outcast. Alongside Adam Rose, Bo Dallas, and Curtis Axel. Curtis Axel's finally back on TV. That could have something to do with uh, the half of the roster being in, on the other side of the – wait a minute, that was the, a live show taping? That was last week. Okay, I don't know. I get a mixed up. Raw is just so interesting nowadays. Boo. Yeah, boo. <laughs> but, yeah, so Curtis Axel's back on TV. Curtis, Adam Rose, Bo Dallas have a new faction called the Social Outcast. <laughs> 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 it wasn't even on Hulu. That was not on Hulu, man. I missed that. <laughs> they cut that out of Hulu. Wouldn't you? Who, who wants time to see Slater in the ring? <laughs> It really does. Damian Sandow, man. Damien Sandow. That's the three man band, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that is so oh, man. He's terrible. 
that's what I'm reading right there, man. Just a quick <laughs> result, quick results, you know, because I watched it. I just, I just need reminders. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see. Yeah. That's sad, though, man. That they have to, to get be called social outcasts so they can actually get some exposure. <laughs> that's terrible. Right. After the epic promo between Jericho and the New Day, later in the night, the New Day had a match with the Dudley boys. The New Day, three-on-three three, tag against the Dudleys and Callisto. And the New Day won the match after a midnight hour on Devon Dudley. That's one of, one of their finishers. That was a pretty good match, actually. A big fan of the New Day. Always liked the Dudleys. And Callisto, Rey Mysterio, Jr., Jr., <laughs> Pretty funny. Stuff. <laughs> it's sad, man. <laughs> no, 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 make him junior, junior. His name is Junior. Booyaka, booyaka. <laughs> hey, and I stole, I stole Don Tony's joke. I said Charlotte has a nose like an upside down penis. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that is Sorry, terrible. Don Tony. Sorry, DT, you might to rot. <laughs> this my house no. This my house no. Oh yeah. God. The beautiful people said that. They said they said on T on TNA, they said uh the other night their promo. They're like, You think this is your house? This is the beautiful people's house. I was like, hmm. Oh, trying to cross over on page now. Better be careful. Oh wait, oh, wait. Did, you, did you watch TNA on uh yeah. Pop T oh, that how was it? It was. It was. If if you if 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 you try to look at it, I try looking at it <clears throat> from a fresh perspective. Um, it was decent. I just I just I don't like the way they do things because they'll have a live show like like the other night was live Wednesday night last night was live show. That's great, but they'll do two days and film four, five, six, seven episodes in those two days, and really to me. It just dampers the quality. It wasn't bad. Oh, right. Karen, Karen Terrell left um, the dollhouse. She left. She was the blonde. Well, what happened was she, she found God. She became a Christian, and she just left TNA. Oh, wow. So now they got Britney something, which you call a rebel. She was in that menagerie, you know, the menagerie that was there. She's with, she's with them now. She's the leader of the dollhouse now. Um, Angelina... Love is not is pregnant, so she can't fight. So now it's Taylor, Madison Rain and my girl Velvet Sky that are fighting as the, uh, together now. But um, e, e, EC3 won the title from Matt Hardy. They had the finals of the series. Uh, they had the semifinals uh, on the yeah. live paper, uh, the live show. Right. It was Bobby Lashley versus uh, Bobby Lashley versus EC3. And it was um, in Matt Hardy versus uh, Matt Hardy versus Eric Young, and then in the finals it was EC3 versus Matt Hardy. Which, if you remember, when they were on Destination America, that was the finals for that was the the championship match there. And you know, Matt yeah, Hardy won that. Gave up the title, then they had the tournament. Yeah, exactly. So this time, um, EC3 won uh, the title. James Storm, you remember reading about James Storm a while back when the NXT. He's back in TNA now. <laughs> He's gonna he be said, in church next. <laughs> well, he said he earned. He said the money. They said that the money he was getting, he was gonna get paid under WWE offered under eleven, uh, under a hundred thousand dollars a year, and TNA yeah. was offering two hundred and fifty thousand for two years. So that's like one hundred twenty-five, twenty-five thousand more to, to stay with them. So he resigned them and him and. Bobby Rula like they're going to form Beer Money again, which is awesome to me because I love Beer Money. And yeah, they were, yeah, they were cool. Yeah, that was a good tag team. And and he was explaining like, well, I've been around wrestling and watching wrestling the last few months, and I didn't like where I was going because his character on TNA four they went off. He, it was just he was the leader of Renegades and stuff, and it was just stupid, you know. So he said he's going to come back and drink a little beer, have some fun, and make some money. So he gave Bobby Rula beer and. They said they're going to be beer money, so they get that tag team back. That'll be good. So uh, as you see, um, um, it was it was Je and Jeff Hardy even made an appearance. He was in Matt's corner both both matches. Matt was in for the title and and stuff. But uh, 
Awesome Kong, she made her appearance back in the and helped um, squash Gail Kim because Gail Kim came out there with the beautiful people to make it a three on three. And oh, she yeah. Out there, yeah. Kong, and, and Awesome Kong came out there and just squashed uh, Vel, uh, Gail Kim to end their match. But uh, it was decent. If you watch it from like trying to get a fresh perspective of it, it's not so bad. But if you're like, this is the same shit I'm watching as it did last time. It's just you know, dude. It's not any good. It's it's not any good from looking from that perspective. You have to say, okay, I'm gonna start fresh. They, what what the good one thing I did like too is they move. You remember how they were in that separate room, um, with Destination yeah, America? Yeah, commentators. Right. They're now back at ringside now, which I said that's good. Yeah. Because I mean, it looked like they were. It looked like they were in a separate room calling something that was so far that from like they were in one studio and then. That, which they were literally calling matches in and in from the TV monitor it was in front of them, but that was some WWF superstar shit from the <laughs> 90s. I remember that. Yeah, I remember they doing that. But that's what it was. It wasn't. Um, they moved them back out of the ring, and I'm like, thank God they did that. But uh, but they they there's some and um, oh my God, you um, Michael Bennett that used to be with um in Ring of uh, Ring of Honor. Remember Maria, the hot one, the um. Yeah, nice, but she they're on T and they they come to TNA now. He's called the Miracle. There, the Miracle, Michael Bennett. Yeah, uh, yeah, but he's not. Don't worry. Remember, I was speaking about Bo Dallas when when um about that the other night. He's not like Bo Dallas. It's not like a you got to believe. He don't want to do that. So that's terrible. It looks like it's pretty decent though. Uh, yeah, I watched so. T. The last time I watched TNA was when they were in um the old Raw Center. The Manha- uh, what was it? The Manhattan Center in New York, mm-hmm. where they had them, them live shows, and it, that was oh. the last one. Those were pretty good, you know. TNA's mm-hmm. like hit or miss for me. I'll try to keep up with it. <laughs> I watched some of their pay per views on YouTube, which was kind of funny. But uh, I keep up every time to time, and then you know I get kind of frustrated with it or whatever. But um, you know, it's like they always hit the, the reset button, the reset button, you know. But you never know, pop TV, you know, this could be their thing. So we'll see, we'll see what happens with that. But um, did it show the TV guide under the show? No, because it was the pop. Like I was before, when it was the regular SD channel, that's the channel that showed the the, the TV guide underneath it. The regular HD channel now, high definition channel they show is just a regular channel. So it's not. Um, yeah. Well, see, I didn't I didn't know that because I got Pop TV at at, a, at, at my workplace. And they got the SD version. And every time I turn it there, they got the TV guy. And I'm like, oh, wow, TNA's going to be on there with a the TV guy <laughs> under it. <laughs> so, uh, but it wasn't so bad. I'll try to give a TNA report from time to time. I'll try to watch it just for TNA, that. So. TNA, the, the action, the wrestling is pretty good in TNA. I actually enjoy it more so than Raw half the time. But <clears throat> let me switch back to Raw because we get to the final segment here, the main event. Uh, 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 Roman Reigns defending this title against Sheamus as Vince McMahon was a special guest referee. And actually, this match was surprisingly good. It was, there was a lot of action and spots in it. What it was is, you know, they were doing the thing where Roman Reigns would have Sheamus beat Vince well, like he didn't well, count slow or he had, like he had something in his eye and stuff like that. And then Roman Reigns is straight up – Superman punch Vince. I'm like, oh shit! And then Stephanie came running out there, the tits bouncing like that, and he pulled her over the ropes, and she fell on her backside, and hmm. and Vince was about knocked out, and Sheamus tried to, uh, Sheamus did his uh, broad kick, and Vince out like he couldn't. There was some kind of botch here because Sheamus did the broad kick, the most protected finisher in the business. And then Vince is taking his time to crawl over to count for Sheamus. You know, he, he wanted Sheamus to win. Oh, it's cool. like he was waiting on something. And what? And then they find, and then the, the commentators finally said, oh, Vince is two days to make a count, a three count. <laughs> and then another referee ran to the ring. And then by that time, Roman Reigns was able to kick out. But what should have happened was Vince should have got up and just rang the bell disqualification because Roman Reigns attacked a referee. In Vince, and that's that's what I thought was going to happen. And um, let me see. So uh, yeah, Roman Reigns kicked out. They had another back and forth, back and forth, and eventually Sheamus got the pin. 
because he hit he uh, I think he speared Vince McMahon or he Superman punched him again. And then another ref ran out there and he finally got the pinfall on Sheamus to close <laughs> to close the show. And then Vince got on the microphone. He said, All right, Sheamus. And I mean, uh, he said, All right, Roman Reigns, you're gonna have to defend your title at the Royal Rumble against twenty nine other superstars. So basically, the Royal Rumble match is gonna be for the WWE title. Roman's still the champion. Look at it this way. Roman Reigns goes into the Rumble match number one, I guess, and then he's got to defend his title against 29 other guys. But I believe Brock Le- I brought, they announced Brock Lesnar. He's going to be in the Rumble match too. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I'm thinking Roman's going to keep his title or Brock will keep it. Then Roman will say, well, I never lost the title one-on-one. I want a rematch. You know, he'll right. lose it in the Rumble match and then – He'll say, well, I never lost it one-on-one. That's how he'll get his rematch. And he can set up WrestleMania that way, I suppose. You know. Mm-hmm. But um, Raw, Raw was kind of – it worked. The, the opening was okay and the ending was okay. And the New Day <laughs> the, the new day segments were good. The main event surprised me. You know, I had a lot of action and stuff like that in it. And I was just laughing at, you know, Mr. Man being uh, – his timing was off there a little bit. And – you know, it's just, that's about it. It was entertaining, though, the main event was. Uh, I can't imagine sitting through three hours of it. But. Yeah. I heard well, Mulu, okay. Jericho coming back, like I said, that's that's not, that's just the same old sh- shit to me. I'm not a big Jericho fan. I got nothing against him. He just don't do nothing for me. But mm-hmm. that promo, back and forth promo he had with the New Day was pretty hilarious, you know, as you oh. can imagine. So that, that was pretty good and Jericho said he's going to join the, the Royal Rumble and headline WrestleMania again. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just bullshit, man, but they made Kevin Owens look real strong tonight other than him being put through a table oh. by Nick Ambrose, but he beat the shit out of Neville again. Clean. Now. He got a clean <laughs> victory over Neville this week, so that was very, very enjoyable to watch. Uh, but, you know, they're just heat, heating up the feud with him and uh, Ambrose and KO. They're heating up that feud. So that's the feud I'm interested in. I, I don't give a fuck about, you know, Roman Reigns right now. I like Roman Reigns, but, you know, it just ain't nothing happening right now. And uh, the Rumble sound, sounds like it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be like the 1992 Royal Rumble where the title's on the line. So that's that's cool, man. So Cena could walk out with it. Brock or Roman, you know, I'm thinking mm-hmm. Brock might take it. Then well, I don't know, dude. Roman could possibly keep it. That way it make him a strong, strong baby face. Like, hey, you know, I defended my title in the Rumble and I still got the title. Now what? You know, then well, Triple H or Triple H could cost him. Triple H could get Roman yeah. Reigns eliminated out, out of the Rumble, which will set up a few there. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was about to say myself. I was about to say that they were talking about that as a possibility. But then what you're sitting there again making Roman screwed out of the title yet again, having to chase the title yet again. That's the only thing about it, man, is him doing that. You know, right. to me it's, it's it's just I mean, I think it's cool and and whatnot that Roman's getting that push and, and stuff and like you said, getting him back in at number at, uh, at you know being in the rumble, I think that's a good idea because that's the first time that's ever happened that they've they've had the champion. Now you know they've had it once before, but that was when the title was vacated. Um, you know earlier on in uh, uh past you know past um and um, shows, but this time it was uh for, or past Royal Rumbles. But I think you know I, I'm 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 like you though. What how tough is it? How bad is it that? You sit there and you think the, the IC title matchup and feud is better than the actual world title matchup. Uh, it, it usually is these past couple of years. Seems Very like. sad, man, with shame ass. You know, I mean, it's it's sad that he's that he's that badly in it. You know, I mean, I nobody really likes him so much. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't care for Sheamus, dude. He just. Makes you want to change the channel. <laughs> I wasn't a fan of him when he was a babyface on SmackDown. And right. it seemed like he had more momentum back then. He's more irrelevant now than he's ever been. And and that's true, man. It's, well, it's, I was talking about, like, the the League of Nations 
you know, a lot of them guys in the League of Nations, I, I don't really have a problem with. I, I don't know if it's their fault. The fans are just the writing or the era we live in or something like with Wade Barrett and Alberto Del Rio because they're all talented and, you know, and things like that, but they're just not clicking. Right. Seamus has got the look. He's a big guy. He's a tall guy. Right. He's got a good finisher, but he's not connecting with the crowd. He don't have a manager. He's in a faction that nobody cares about. I mean, I, just, I don't get it. You know, because this is what you just said, but everybody is fed up. Their characters have all played out. They've tried so many different gimmicks that they're not working, and and nobody cares about them anymore. Who? Why would you care about someone who's had twenty different gimmicks and none of them work, or they become irrelevant now? The whole yeah, but is, is it their is it their fault for no, the gimmick? No, not at all. Or is it the writing? There's a, it's is, the writers. It's the, the characters. Can, that's, the, that's, the what I'm, that's what I'm thinking, man. The rest of that wrestling is just going down, and people just don't care about wrestling no more because they don't have the magic no more. I mean, I think they could have done something with, with Wade Barrett and all that. Yeah, you know, that's I mean, true. But to, but until you have to look at Wade Barrett's situation, he kept, he kept getting hurt. Every time he was in line for a push for a title, he kept getting that's hurt. That's true. You know? That's true. They had something with the Bad News Barrett thing. Because the, the people got behind that, then he became uh, King Barrett, and ever since then, that's why it, it's been downhill. You know? Vince killed it. Vince did not want him getting people getting behind him. That's why he stopped the that's bad. So stupid for business, though. You know, yeah, you don't, but that's Vince. Don't want somebody thing. to get over. Come on, man. You need people to get over. Yeah, but Vince, that's Vince, dude. For you, Vince thinks. Well, uh, the fans are cheering. Let's not do this. You know. Come on. I mean, if the fans are cheering, let them do it. I mean, the fans are going to dictate it anyway. Right, right. You know, they're going to tell you anyway what it's going to be, and you're just going to like it. I mean, that's just the way Vince is going to have to realize it. So. Yeah, it's, they don't they don't listen anymore. Back in the Attitude Era, they seemed like they would listen more so, you know. Mm. Like when Olsen did that, that heel turn in 2001, and then they turn them back, baby face, because they realize it just wasn't working. So mm -hmm. like they, they just listen to the fans more back. Well, we don't have WCW around anymore, for one thing. Well, they did that with Goldberg. They, they don't listen to the fans. They listen to the fans with Mick Foley as a champion and stuff like that, even though he was kind of a trans transitional champion. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I, just, I don't know, man. I, well, they did Goldberg the same way. And WCW, they tried to turn Goldberg heel. Yeah. It didn't work. It did not work at all. It was a failed, miserable attempt and at trying to cause a shakeup with them. That's where they messed up at, was trying to make Goldberg a heel with that whole bad blood, new transition with Hogan. I watched a uh, an interview, a shoot interview with Kevin Sullivan um, yesterday. Or was day four? No, it was day four yesterday, excuse me. And he was talking about when he booked, because, you know, 99, 2000, 2001, when they finally ended up, you know, selling, Kevin Sullivan was, Kevin Sullivan was talking like he could have got the booking, but then it's like when you had that whole, um, you know, he had, he said he told Brad Siegel, which is the guy that sold WCW. Did you know Vin, um, Eric Bischoff had a group together to buy WCW for $40 million? Yeah. Brad Siegel said no. Right, then, yeah, he wouldn't sell it. I heard yeah. about that. It's but true. then a year later, he sold it to Vince for a whopping four million dollars because he won't. Right. And, yeah, that. I mean, what even kind of business is that for you to go and sell a company for ten times less than what you could have got for? Because Bischoff could have got it on a different TV channel. It's just Brad Siegel's acting like an asshole and didn't yeah. let Bischoff and his group buy. It. Right, I remember hearing about that. Um, yeah, uh, Bischoff was on Jr.'s podcast as well as Kevin Sullivan talking about that. I heard that. I heard that somewhere before too. Yeah, because mm -hmm. and DDP's always talking about that as well. You know, because all they had to do was just find another network to go to, but they didn't have the time to do it. You know, because of, you know what you were just talking about, and if things didn't work out. Then Vince took it up. Now, that's a shame, too, because Nitro was still doing pretty good in the ratings, 3.5 ratings, man, or whatever it was. That's good. You know, that's not bad at all. Yeah, it's even better than what they do, what, today's ratings, and that's yeah. years later. 
And WCW was just going through a down period. They could have, like WWF was, and they could have just picked themselves back up eventually. Uh, you know, in the mid '90s, WWF was, you know, getting way low in the ratings, and they had their down period. You know, that was WCW's down period. They never had a chance to come back up. You know, to me, to me, buddy, um, I feel like Raw is going through what Nitro did at the end. Creative is it bad. Seems like it, it, it seems like it, dude. It's crazy. It is creative. And you would never think that back in the day. Like the, the high and mighty events would never let his show become such a such a um, embarrassment to watch some weeks like that. Mm. But um, but that's why he's on TV every week now, Vince. You know, as a regular now, <laughs> it's just it's crazy <laughs> seeing him on there like that. But. Like I said earlier, man, they're just putting a, a Band-Aid on a bleeding product. They're not really fixing long-term problems and making solutions. They're just yeah. temporary things. But WrestleMania is coming up, so they're probably going all out. Then we're going to have a down season. And that's unfortunate, man, because, you know, the key word with wrestling is exciting. People love it when it's exciting, you know. Exactly. And I wish there was more to look forward to at WrestleMania than a rock promo from The Rock, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But when I was doing the um, my WrestleMania memory video, I was talking about that. I said wrestling was always good when it was exciting, when it had that exciting moment to it. You know, right? And Vince getting arrested last week. I guess that was an exciting moment. Vince botching moves and as a referee was kind of funny, and you know, just little exciting things like that. You know, is what they need to focus on. So. Yeah, but the dude, it's like a. Uh it's like you know, I with them, I you know, I just felt like they could have done a lot more. But it's like you said, they simply just they've lost that nostalgia. I mean, Vince is having to go on there, do stuff he did 10, 20 years ago, get arrested like he did. Right. Um, I mean, it's it's a sad thing because dude, he's got to put some butts in the seats for that. Um, you know, for that basically that uh, whole situation, WrestleMania is just around the corner. It ain't like two or three months away. He better get some interesting storylines because it. You know, people are buying WrestleMania tickets right now just because it's WrestleMania, not because of the product. I don't feel well, and maybe you feel differently, but no, I, I agree with you. Um, the WrestleMania sells itself as well as the the Royal Rumble pay per view. That sells itself too because people want to see the Rumble match. But, no, I agree. I agree with that. But they just they need they need to get some more excitement for those fans that aren't typical WrestleMania goers to buy in because they're trying to sell out that hundred thousand dollars, hundred thousand seat See, stadium in Dallas. Man, that's a lot of people. I mean, you remember the Silver Dome? I mean, <laughs> that seventy some had seventy some um thousand people with that one. That was seventy thousand. This is. A hundred thousand. No, that was a uh, well, supposedly ninety three thousand, but that wasn't the correct oh. attendance. Ninety three thousand WrestleMania three. Was that what it was? Ninety three. Yeah, but uh. Vince got interviewed later, and he said the true attendance was, like you said, seventy some thousand. And he said the reason they said ninety three thousand was part of the entertainment. You know, so mm -hmm. they always exaggerate the number. But yeah, but that was the biggest WrestleMania attendance, though, as far as I know. Yeah, well, that was the whole football stadium. It's probably why, because it wasn't like now. Because now oh, they now, can, now well, yeah, Ho but it was Hogan and Andre, dude. People wanted to see that. People were excited for it. Yeah, then. but they didn't have the big ass stadium, the big ass sets and stuff like they do now. Now you got half the stage. They have to yeah. block out a certain amount of seats because you have somewhere to put the stage at. Back then, if you look at old WrestleMania 1, 2, and 3, it looks like one box in the middle of everybody. You know, that's the, the ring, which was the ring. Right, right. That was it. But now you got these big sets and everything that take up room. And by doing yeah, that... They're doing, like, they're doing like these stadiums and domes now. Mm -hmm. Give it like a bigger feel to it. Exactly. Yeah. But, Other than that, there's not much going on in, in, in wrestling this week. Unless there's any news that you've heard of in, in the wrestling world. No, just the fact that um, – oh, 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 WWE signed AJ Styles. Yeah, um, I saw that. And uh, uh, a couple uh, other uh, New Japan talent, New Japan pro wrestling talent, along with AJ Styles. 
and that's cool. You know? Yeah, but AJ, man, AJ is so much older. They need AJ. Oh, uh, did you hear the new breaking news that John Cena suffered a shoulder injury? Oh, you just making a joke. No, uh, John Cena <laughs> suffered so. This is on <laughs> WWE.com. Uh, the first or the first uh the first pe- the headline John WWE news John Cena suffers sur- uh, shoulder injury out six to nine months. Bullshit! Really? Uh, yeah, I'm looking on it. Former WWE champion John Cena re- recently suffered a rotator cuff injury and will have to undergo surgery to repair it. And it's even on his Twitter. This will keep John Cena. And this is what it says. This will keep Cena out for six to nine months. He was expected to be a major part of WrestleMania 32, which is being held at AT AT&T Stadium in Dallas. And John Cena says this on his Twitter. Rather upside down start to 2016 as tomorrow, I will head to Birmingham for shoulder surgery. Life's full of setbacks, but hashtag never give up. So that's why he wasn't on Raw Monday. Yep, that's what it said. Yeah, I didn't see him on Raw. That's true. (laughs) <laughs> well, I shouldn't laugh at that. Oh, they're fucked now, dude. <laughs> yeah. They they're are fucked now. Nobody. They are fucked now, man. I <laughs> hate. I don't wish injury on nobody, but six months without seeing a shit, dude. Six, six. What was it? Randy Orton weren't Randy Orton six to nine months too? Yep. Yeah. Seth Rollins six to nine months too. Yep, and all three of them is going to miss WrestleMania, it looks like. Six to nine months, dude. All three of those guys. Can you imagine? They're going to have to bring some of these NXT guys up. Or sound like you said, bring push AJ uh, Styles and and, yeah. and and Samoa Joe on uh, up. Go ahead and push them to the main roster. Go ahead and let them go into the main roster instead of NXT so that they can fill in some room. Because with Cena out, with Rollins out, with Orton out, then you know you're gonna have a lot of your main cut right there out. Brock Lesnar is gonna Vince is gonna call up Brock and be like, "Hey, you want to make some extra money?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Damn, Kurt Angle, man, Kurt Angle might come back. That's a possibility. Desperate times calls for desperate measures. Bring in Kurt Angle, man, Tony. Kurt Angle, uh, you know, Undertaker's going to have a match against two. You know, right, so, three they're gone, so there ain't there ain't it ain't special no more. He should have a retirement match like Flair did. Well, no, Cena was supposed to fight him, dude. Cena was supposed to fight up be Undertaker at WrestleMania. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, that don't that don't interest me unless there's some kind of hook to it. Taker could be like, if I lose again, I will retire. Like Flair did, you know that that would make it more interesting. Give it a little twist there. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that was just breaking. That's what happened. I was like, wow. So WrestleMania is it's going to be WrestleMania 32 slash NXT Revolution. <laughs> 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 they might as well just have an NXT show there. Wow. Dad, did you see Raw's rating, man? I was going to ask you, it's time for Bill Mack's Raw Rating of the Week. Hit me with it, bro. Bill Mack. This is Bill Mack here with your Raw Rating for the Week. Monday's episode of WWE Raw scored a whopping 2.49 rating, which is up from a bit from the whopping 2.47 from last week's episode. True, that's what. The show drew 3.575 million viewers, which is up from last week's 3.536 3.536 million viewers. The first hour did 3.7, while the viewers the second half did a 3.516, and the final hour did a 3.503. So look at your – this has been your Bill Max raw, raw rating for this week. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> oh, we need some music behind that. <laughs> it's so funny, like, dun 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 This has been your Raw report. Yeah, we need Solid Monster to come on here one day. He probably, <laughs> he probably would, man, if we asked him. To, if we paid him, he would. You know, if we paid him, he would. Yeah. Oh, DP sounded horrible the other day, man. <laughs> he did, man. That was terrible. He tells the same stories over and over. Every DDP interview is exactly the same, dude, about Hulk Hogan and the curtain 
behind the curtain. Oh, you're going to, we're going to draw money brother in a few years and the dusty road story, and same old stuff, but that's what happened. You know, he's just telling how it happened, but it's the same story every time. You know, I got injured, and then I got into yoga. It's exactly the same. But that's cool, though. You know, I like so, I like DDP, obviously, but, you know, mm -hmm. he's always telling, giving the same story. But nobody hits him with the question. What the fuck was up with the Jake the Snake Twitter video a couple of weeks ago? <laughs> nobody <laughs> would ask him about that. <laughs> that's going to be some bad, uh, bad press right there for Jake's documentary that's currently out. So that, that's probably why they're not talking about it. DDP said, well, Solid Monster, I'll be on your show, but don't bring up Jake the Snake in that Twitter video because we're trying to advertise his uh, resurrection uh, documentary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. They agreed not to talk about it beforehand. Had to, because that had been the first thing I asked him. What the hell's wrong with Jake, man? <laughs> what the hell's he doing? <laughs> I know, man. I feel so bad that because he's tried to, he has tried to help him so much, man. <laughs> right. I, I just don't know. It's like <clears throat> took his teeth out and gum it. <laughs> oh, get somebody a gum job, man. <laughs> Dude, that was so horrible, man. That really was. That yeah. Was, I couldn't believe he done that video. Yeah. I'm like, is he trying to cut a promo? Um. Was he trying to cut a promo for a future wrestling match or something? I mean, why would he be talking about Bray Wyatt like that? I don't know. I didn't even watch it, dude, but I, I heard all about it from uh, Wrestling Soup and everybody else talk about it. So it's like, I don't want to yeah. see it. Yeah, I listened to DP. I heard about it, you know. I listened, about, you know. Yeah, I, I listened to DT the other um, Monday night. He was talking about how when you were talking about how bad the botch was with Vince, he was yeah. telling um, Kevin Castle like that was the worst botch episode of anything that they's ever that he has ever seen. Yeah, well, I don't know if it was the worst, but because I listened to DT before I watched Raw, and I was looking for that what DT was talking about, right? And it was it was odd, you know, because um, um, Sheamus had Roman Reigns defeated, and Vince would not make the three count. When he was supposed to, he was stalling and stalling, waiting for another ref to come out there because all through the match, Vince was trying to do a quick count for Sheamus to win. And then when um, Sheamus had Roman beat, suddenly he couldn't count, you know, because the truth is Roman Reigns was supposed to win that match, and he did, you know. So they kind of messed up there, you know. So That's, that's horrible to sit there and have to watch that stuff. Shane was like, I got him beat. I got him beat. Count, Vince. I got him beat. And Vince got up like he was full, fully alert. And then suddenly he went, oh, I can't count. Oh, I can't count. You know, <laughs> He was just stalling. Then the other ref came out there, and eventually Roman Reigns did the Superman punch and defeated Sheamus. <laughs> it's just the way the story was planned out. You know, no. but in re if that was reality, Vince would have went ahead and counted. You know, it's just kind of fucked up how that happened. Event, you know, Vince is old man. He does the best he can. He was <laughs> he botched back in the nineties when he did stuff like that. With uh, Stone Cold, he would botch back then. Mm -hmm. You know, he ain't no wrestlers. Austin has been quoted as saying that Vince is the worst wrestler seller in the world. You know? <laughs> like oh. No seller, you know. Yeah. Oh, I seen that tonight, dude. Um, I was watching um from TNA. I tell you who done ba a bad selling job tonight. And that's Matt Hardy, man. Matt Hardy, uh, EC3 went to do like a, he is kind of like an F5, but he didn't spin him around. It was kind of like a, a front-faced uh, RKO. Um, so, and, and he was supposed to have pinned Hardy when he put him on it. But Hardy jumped right back up, and he ended up having to do the same move again to make sure he stayed down because Hardy jumped right up. I'm like, hell, he didn't even sell that move. You talk. You talking about the, the twist of fate? No, it wasn't a twist of fate. This was EC three doing it on on Hardy. Oh, okay, I got you. He was doing his move, his move on him, and it kind of looks yeah. like a. He's got him up like a F five, but it looks like a frontwards RKO. Instead yeah. of being behind him and, and turn around the other way, he's facing him when he does it. But instead of selling it and laying down there like he was hurt, for because he was hurt, he was supposed to be hurt from uh, from the match before. He got right back up, right. and and the guys are like, 
It must have stung Matt Hardy too well, too good. And then he had to end up doing the same move again. I'm like, well, there you go. But that's all that I'm saying, man, about botching moves and stuff. They got to do – these wrestlers got to do a better job. Yeah, definitely. Remember. Well, I think – I think we reached the end of the show, man. I'm kind of tired, man. Um, not much going on this week in the wrestling news, but I appreciate you uh, taking the time to pop up in here. I know you had a busy, busy week. Well, and thanks time, to everyone man. out there um, in YouTube land for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you want to. Much appreciated. And we thank you again for watching. That's right. Peace out. Peace.